to this, which we hope to be our last pre-recorded time of prayer and meditation. It has been difficult to be apart at such a time of concern, but know that God has been with us, listening to our prayers, guiding us, and that God is still. Next week, we will worship at 9.30 a.m. on the South Lawn of the Church. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. Watch for email with information on the precautions we will be taking, including pre-registering for this service. Before we worship, I'd like to offer a word of thanks to the mission study team who has completed its report and to the session for its careful review and immediate planning for implementation. The team will be presenting a summary of its findings following worship on June 12th. The full report will also be made available as well as virtual opportunities to learn about and discuss the findings. Blackhawk Presbytery has now gladly given permission for our nominating committee to prepare a pastor nominating slate. We have much to be grateful for. So let us worship God. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Lord, you have brought us to the edge of a new land. You have raised up leaders to hold our hands as we cross over. Though the water may be threatening, you have made a way for us together. For all this, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea, and God's grace is wider than the whole earth. Trusting in that mercy and grace, let us make our confession before God and each other. Let us pray. Merciful God, you lead us on the right path, but we wander off the trail. You ask us to trust enough to take risk, and we cower. You give us partner on the journey, but we reject helping hands. We fear failure. We shrink from our responsibility to take care for our neighbors. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us and strengthen us for the journey ahead. Please pray silently. Our Lord is full of grace. Know that you are forgiven of all your sins and have faith that God is with you on the road ahead.
Today's scripture reading is from Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 through 9 and 11 through 17. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to make you great in the opinion of all Israel. Then they will know that I will be with you in the same way that I was with Moses. You are to command the priest who carries the covenant chest as soon as you come to to the bank of the Jordan, stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come closer, listen to the words of the Lord your God. Look, the covenant chest of the ruler of the entire earth is going to cross over in front of you in the Jordan. Now pick twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one poor tribe. The souls of the priest's feet who are carrying the chest of the Lord ruler of the whole earth will come the rest in the water of jordan at that moment the water of jordan will be cut off the water flowing downstream will stand still in a single heap the people marched out from their tents to cross over the jordan the priests carrying the covenant chest were in the front of the people when the priests who were carrying the chest came to the jordan their feet touched the edge of the water The Jordan had overflowed its banks completely in the way it does during the entire harvest season. But at that moment, the water of the Jordan coming down the stream stood still. It rose up as a single heap very far off, just below Adam, which is the city next to Tharathon. The water is going down to the desert city, that is, the Dead Sea, was cut off completely. The people crossed opposite Jericho. So the priests carrying the Lord's covenant chest stood firmly on dry land in the middle of of the Jordan. Meanwhile, our Israelites crossed over on dry land until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, thank you, Addie, for your wonderful reading of the liturgy and scripture. Well done. I was thinking, it's been a while since I told you what a pansy I can be. Picturing the Israelites crossing the Jordan made me think about a trip to a Presbyterian camp in Pennsylvania a few years back. The church had a vacation Bible school called Traveling Day Camp. The week ended with an overnight at the camp with about 40 kids. One of the kids' favorite activities at the camp was creek stomping in a shallow, mucky creek. I had no idea what lurked below that slimy surface, but I was sure whatever was there was filthy and creepy. I figured I could be there to run for help if necessary. There were other adults that could wade in if the kids got in trouble. My prayers that the kids would wimp out were unmet. The other chaperones with us became occupied with bathroom trips and crying first graders. So I had the unfortunate task of helping the remaining children get down the little slope into the water. You really can't disappoint 10 kids who had hiked a mile in excitement. I mustered the courage and began a little human chain helping the kids in. I made it perfectly clear to the kids that I didn't want so much as a big toe in that water. That was a big mistake. That just made them want to get me in the water in the worst way. It had been raining a lot and the creek bed was complete mud, ridiculously slippery. We succeeded in getting all the kids in and I will admit to thoroughly enjoy their continual shrieks of disgust and joy. I was also successful in staying muddy but dry. And I don't mind telling you, I was pretty great in the opinion of those campers that day. If entering a narrow creek caused me such dread, I can only imagine how hard Joshua's heart must have been pounding. You didn't need phobias to think that this trip through the Jordan was dangerous stuff. How weird and wonderful it must have been to see the water rise up as a single heap 
as their grandparents had seen so many years ago at the Red Sea. But in that miraculous instance, there was adequate motivation to move forward. The options were to take a chance on the seabed or be massacred by the Egyptian army. I have to hand it to Joshua. There was no one chasing them. They were chasing the promises of God that had been made to their ancestors, Abraham and Sarah. The promise of offspring as numerous as the stars had come to pass. They were God's people and they had been blessed time and time again. They had been given a law to live by, but they didn't have land. Their ancestors had lived for a minute in the land God had given, but this generation of chosen people had never seen it, never seen anything but captivity and wilderness. This was a moment when that final promise would be fulfilled. This is not just some selfish materialistic desire. In the ancient world, land meant freedom it meant sustenance. It was a place for family and community, a place for couples to marry and children to be born. It was somewhere to be a nation. That's a really big draw. Even still, crossing the river took some nerve. As soon so would the challenges that met them on the other side. It is why Moses had encouraged Joshua before his death, be strong and bold. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. God encouraged Joshua over and over. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do not fear. It's not because Joshua was, was especially wimpy. It was because God is always asking us to risk for the sake of the kingdom. God had told a long line of people, do not fear, I will be with you. Abraham, Hagar, Jacob, Moses. Later, God would say the same to Gideon, King Hezekiah, the psalmist who was beset by powerful enemies, the community of Jewish exiles, Jeremiah, Daniel, Mary, shepherds, Jesus' disciples, the apostle Paul and John of Patmos. Next week, we will begin to escape the captivity of isolation. We pray we will exit the wilderness of pandemic soon. We are coming back to the land at 2018 North Route 47, but it is a new land. For some time, the Christian church in North America, including this congregation, has been in unknown, uncharted territory. We will have to cross into a new way to live as God's people in a world unlike any we know. The session has just finished reading together a book by Todd Bollinger, Canoeing the Mountains. Along with so many great thinkers for at least 50 years, Bollinger talks about the decline of Christianity as we know it and how the ways we have been church will not work in this new time. Trying harder to do the same things we have been doing will not move us forward. This is a moment, he says, when most of our backs are against the wall and we are unsure if this church will survive to the next generation. The answer is not to try harder, but to start a new adventure. Let go of the assumptions of the past. See not absence, but the discovery of a new, uncharted land beckoning us forward. Yes, in the face of the uncertainties, fears, and potential losses, to learn and be transformed, we need to learn to see new possibilities. We will be returning to a physical space slowly and carefully and with new appreciation of being a people on a journey together.
I have been witness to a renewed sense of heightened urgency around what God is telling us to be as a people gathered and what we are to do. As we move back to being a people together again, we are not going back to the old, but venturing into the new. New because things have been changing constantly for a long time. New because COVID seems to have changed nearly everything about our life. New because God is always doing a new thing. As we cross, we notice that we have been God's children through this time of exile. Church is so much more than being a building on a piece of land, more than just a material possession. It is a gift, a blessing that sustains us, a place where we work the fields, eat the produce, crush the grapes, and rejoice together over the bounty. This is a time ripe with possibilities. The Israelites had priests going into the water before them, carrying the symbol of God's presence. Neither those priests nor Joshua himself knew what lie ahead. They just went forward with God whispering, fear not. It's okay that you have no earthly idea what, what is next, what tools would be needed what, from whence the next meal will come. They trusted the God who has been with them in all places and has always provided what they needed for the time. As Bollinger says, there is no route in front of us, no map, no quick fix or easy answers. But this is good news. This is a divine moment. This is an opportunity to express even more clearly what it means to follow and serve the God who is the king of the entire world. The church has at its best always been a core of discovery. It has always been a small band of people willingly heading into uncharted territory with a mission worthy of utmost dedication. May we embark on this adventure with excitement and joy, patience and kindness, fearlessly, because God is with us every step of the way. Amen. Let us pray. Ruler of the whole earth, hear our prayers of gratitude. We are so thankful for all the blessings of this world, for your giving us land and community with, to sustain us, for calling us together as your people, for being our God, and being with us here and everywhere. We praise you because in Christ you entered into this fearful adventure of life with us and conquered all that would cause us to cower. You are more wonderful than we can know. Trusting in your faithfulness, we pray for your world that is still seeking to live in your perfect land. We pray today for all the nations we pray for an end to a pandemic that has caused so much suffering and does not seem to be letting up. We pray for those who are sick, for those heroes caring for them and for us, for all who are separated from loved ones, especially those grieving the loss of life. Make us to live in ways that care for our neighbor and bring healing and eradicate this virus quickly. Lord, our hearts ache as we look at the brutal history of racism in this country and its ubiquitous presence still on our streets and in our hearts. The sin is so deep we cannot heal ourselves. By your spirit, cause us to examine ourselves and learn about our neighbor. Heal us and transform us into a people who honor each and every one of your children as if they were our own. We pray, Lord, for the economic structures of this world. Bring stability and teach us how to build systems that serve the whole of humanity fairly. Be with those who are without work, without housing, without adequate food, without the ability to care for their families. Give them work with dignity, pay that sustains, and security for the future. 
God be with Christ Church everywhere. Keep her safe. Keep her compassionate and courageous as we move into the future you have planned for us. Guide us as we move into a world full of fears and possibilities. Calm our fears. Guide us in this new land. Fill us with joy in every circumstance because you are our God and we are your people. We pray these things in the strong, loving, saving name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, that will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the God of the entire world sustain you. May Christ be your guide, and may the Holy Spirit be your courage and strength on this wonderful journey of life. Amen.